Yeah. How's it going? I'm Canadian. Anybody care? <laughs> oh, really? That's a pretty good reaction. That's not bad. I live here in London. It's weird being Canadian here in London because uh, I get this a lot. Uh, hey, you guys are a lot like Australians. And I'm like, eh, not really. <laughs> pretty sure my ancestors had a choice to move to Canada. <laughs> I took a second. All right. <laughs> I like it here. I live here in London. Is that right? Um, I love London. I'm a big fan of London. It's gorgeous. I've lived here for two years in London. I brag about it like it's my own town. I had a friend of mine visit me from the Netherlands. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And I showed him all the hot spots of London. I took him down to the uh, British Museum. Yeah. I showed him all the shit you guys stole. <laughs> You guys stole a lot of stuff, man. And a lot of people, when they steal stuff, they hide it. Not you, no. You put it on display and charge them to look at it again. <laughs> That's a nice twist. I took him down to the Parliament buildings. You ever been down to the Parliament buildings? Showed him the seat of Western democracy? That was amazing. Then I took him down to the, uh, the London Eye, the Millennium Wheel. You built that in celebration of the 90s millennium right there, you know? After you made all that money in the 90s. A lot of countries made money in the 90s. Remember the 90s, yeah? France made money in the 90s. Spain made money in the 90s. Greece pretended to make money in the 90s. <laughs> All sorts of people made money in the 90s, but different countries did different things with their money. Like, uh, let's see, France and Spain, they built uh, high-speed infrastructure rail networks in between everywhere. What did you guys do in England? You built a freaking Ferris wheel with all your money. <laughs> Not just here, you built one in every major city in your country. You built one in Bristol, you built one in Liverpool. You can ride a Ferris wheel in Liverpool to the top, see another Ferris wheel in Manchester and go, Jesus, wish there's a fast way to get to that one. <laughs> I asked my friend from the Netherlands, I bet you'd like to live here in London. He goes, no, I would not. I go, what do you mean you'd not? He goes, there's too much crime here in London. I go, what's it like back in Holland? He goes, we have no crime in Holland. So I went and stayed with him for two weeks, and I found out there's no crime in Holland because nothing is illegal. <laughs> you can't get arrested, just try. Did you just fuck that 15-year-old? Yes, well, why don't you give her a flower? Really? That's it? <laughs> it is nice to be here. You guys are such good people. I'm sweating a little, I apologize. I'm a bit of a, I'm a face sweater, which is the worst type of sweating. It's awful being a face sweater. If you're a face sweater, by the way, you're not alone. I'm with you, brother. And here's a face sweater tip if you're a face sweater. Don't stare at kids on the tube. <laughs> That's good advice. That's, take that. What should I tell you about myself? I'm getting older. I got married a little while ago. It's about, yeah. Oh, look at the sad looks on the girls' faces. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry, I cheat. <laughs> I do. I love cheating. It's the best type. <laughs> oh, I got a great wife, too. I shouldn't. I really shouldn't. But she's amazing. She's awesome. She's half Japanese, half German, or as my grandfather constantly reminds me, two-thirds of the axis. <laughs> I love my wife, too. I really do. Right after we got married, we got married about two and a half years ago. And right after we got married, I got offered a 13-week tour of this lovely country of the United Kingdom. And I took her over here, and we uh, landed in Manchester. Is that right? <laughs> um, I don't know. A lot of tracksuits. And... <laughs> We're in Manchester, so I took my wife on this 13-week tour of the UK, and we started off in Manchester, and we're there for about three days, three days in that lovely Manchester, and my sweet little angel of a wife, which you guys just love her, uh, just turns into a bitch, just a bitch, <laughs> just out of nowhere, mood swings, up and down, screaming, yelling, crying, throwing up every morning, and uh, uh, you caught on to it quicker than I did, look at that. <laughs> I know, it turns out she caught pregnant. How does that happen? <laughs> I've never been around a pregnant girl before. And hey, if you got a chance to tour Europe with a pregnant girl for 13 weeks, oh, book it. What a good time that is. <laughs> you girls lose your minds when you get pregnant. I had no idea what happens when you get pregnant. Like, just little things. Now, I don't mean to be crass, because this is kind of a family audience, but the first thing caught me off guard. She got really horny when she got pregnant. And my buddies are like, oh, yeah, she got horny, kind of cool. No, not cool horny, freaking scary horny. <laughs> And come home, she'd just be humping the arm of the Chesterfield. What are you doing? <laughs> you fuck me now. You didn't even look up. I could be anybody. <laughs> I didn't even know what to do with her in bed because she was like morphing into this sexy being. Her breasts swelled, or just, and she'd get in there and her nipples, bing, bing. And, <laughs> and you go to touch them. Those aren't for you. Well, who else are they for? There's nobody else here. Just fuck me. I don't know how. You're like an angry bear with sore breasts. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Oh, and the next thing that happened, oh my God, please don't judge me on this one, but I love this, I love it. Okay, uh, okay, the next thing when she got pregnant, she started to fart. Oh, I love it when girls fart, I'm sorry. I don't know what it is, but when I, I love it. It makes 
me so happy when a girl farts. It lights my heart up like, oh my God, you're on my level, yes! But her farts never stopped. She just You could have propelled her around a pool by her farts. And then her diet changed. Her diet got all weird too. I remember that. I woke up one night, she's in the fridge, little tiny little English fridge, and she was, uh, she was licking an egg. And I'm like, why? Why are you licking an egg? She I just need to lick an egg. And I'm like, you lick eggs. That's the cheapest diet we'll ever have right there. <laughs> Then she reached for some sushi. She goes, I'm gonna eat some sushi. She goes, doctor said no fish, no fish when you're pregnant. I'm eating the fish. <laughs> All right, well, I'm a stupid baby. Eat the fish, that'll be good. <laughs> and I thought what she was doing was she was putting together the tools she needed to build a human life in her belly. No, that's not what she was doing. She was actually trying to create the worst smelling fart she could possibly create. Because <laughs> the farts stop being happy pff, farts and went into these silent attack farts. <laughs> Just these, and you just walk into it. And then the door would slam and you'd, you fuck me now, no! Now, I'm not doing this all for the shock value. These are, these seem like these jokes might be there for the scatological impulse for you to laugh at just the base idea. But they actually all came together in one instance to test my new husbandship in one particular moment. And I'll tell you, at the end of that 13 week tour, I had to fly home to Vancouver, a nine and a half hour flight back to Vancouver from London Heathrow. Now this is the day after a couple of fellas tried to blow up an airport in Glasgow and they were on high terrorism alert in the airport. I'd never been through a terrorism alert before because nobody hates Canada. And we went through the airport and it was freaky, it was scary. Guys had guns and they were shaking us down. I was terrified. And me and my wife, we finally get on the plane after an hour of security and we sit there and like, oh, thank God. Plane takes off and about an hour into the flight, I look over at my wife and I see her face and she's terrified. And I'm like, oh my God, what is it? Did she see something? And I start looking around the plane trying to see what she sees and I don't see the problem. And I'm worried and I'm starting to freak out. So I turn back to her to see what the problem is. And in front of my eyes, I watch the fear just melt off her face. I'm like, oh, God, whatever it is, it's over. <laughs> and then it hit me. Oh, my God. She had let go the worst smelling fart I'd ever smelled in my life. It didn't even smell like a fart. It smelled like a burning tire with acid poured on it. And the worst thing that could happen happened when she farted. A woman two seats down from us on the right smells her fart and starts to panic out loud on the plane. Oh, my God, what is that? Does anybody smell that? <laughs> And she presses the button to call for the stewardess, and the stewardess comes back. What seems to be the, oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. And it starts to spread around, and everybody starts freaking out. And a woman says the word hydraulic fluid. Now, the entire right side of the plane thinks we're going to crash because of my wife's fart. I can't say anything, or else I'll get her in trouble. So I just go, it smells bad, but I don't think it's dangerous, everybody. Now, I'm praying in my heart that's the only time she does it for the rest of the flight. Oh, no. Every 15 minutes. It was like clockwork. And here's an interesting thing about the human olfactory system, our sense of smell, if you will. If given enough opportunities, we have a throwback from when we used to be hunters in the woods. And we can start telling, if we're given enough chances, the general location a smell is coming from. At hour four, she lets go just an eye peeler, just a, oh, just, what do you got, a little? Oh. And I watch it waft through the cabin of the plane, waking everybody's heads into these, oh, and you see their hunter instincts kicking in. And all of a sudden, like in unison, the entire plane in front of me's heads turn. And none of them are looking at her. They're all looking at me. And I'm left in this quandary where right away I want to go, oh, no, no. But as I turn, I see my new wife's face. I see the future mom to my baby. And I realize I'm being tested. And I know what I'm supposed to do. I turn and face everybody else on that plane. I partially stand up and go, I'm sorry, everybody. I got a bit of an upset stomach. And I took the blame for her fart on that plane. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. And that's why I cheat. Uh, you guys have been great. I love you people. I love the UK. I love your audiences. I, I, I love being here. Being a Canadian coming back to the UK, it's like coming back and visiting your relatives that have been drunk for 200 years. <laughs> it's lovely, and I love everything about this culture, but there's one thing about you people I hate, and I'm going to tell you I'm going to run out those doors. <laughs> but you need to hear it. I hate your kids. 
I do. You have the worst children I've ever seen in the world. You do. No, I'm not talking about all your kids. Not your good kids. We know you're good kids. But you know who I'm talking about. Your bad kids. Your bad kids are freaking awful. And I didn't know how bad they were until I was here in London. And I was on a bus one night, and I was sitting next to this old guy. He's about 80 years old. Probably fought the Nazis for our freedom, you know? And this little kid gets on. Maybe 12, 13, got a hoodie on. You know, whatever. Elbows into this old man. Doesn't say sorry, doesn't say anything. Elbows into him, walks by. And I'm about to say something. The old guy goes, don't worry about it. It happens all the time. He goes, happens all the time? Really? I'm like, okay, but I got my eyes on this kid, you know? I watch him. He goes to the back of the bus, and he sits down at the back of the bus. And he pulls out a mobile phone. Now, I think he's making a call. <laughs> Puts on music holds the phone up and makes everybody else on the bus freaking listen to it. <laughs> now, the weird thing about this is the bus is packed. There's people everywhere on this bus and nobody is saying a word to this kid. Now, I was raised in Canada where I was told the absence of action in the face of injustice is as equal as participation. So I decide I'm gonna do something. So I get up from the front of the bus and I walk all the way to the back and I walk over to this kid and I go, do you mind turning that music off? The rest of us don't wanna listen to it. Now, I felt like I made a connection. So I turn around and I start to walk away. And all of a sudden I hear this, what? <laughs> and this kid yelled, what at me? I'm like, that's amazing for a yellow kid. So I walk back to him, I go, hey, do you mind? Obviously, you didn't, maybe you didn't hear me because the music's so loud, but turn that music off. And I look into his eyes when I say it, and his face starts to bubble with anger, and his eyes are just livid, and his bottom lip starts to quiver like he's never been spoken to by an adult like this in his entire life. And he puffs his chest out at me, which is hilarious because he's like 12, so it's like, poof, like it's not. <laughs> So met with this incredulous behavior, I can only do one thing as an adult, and that's laugh. So I start to laugh. I go, what are you doing? And this woman immediately leans over to me and goes, don't laugh at him. <laughs> well, why, is he royal or something? He goes, no, he's gonna stab you. <laughs> he's 13 years old. I refuse to be afraid of a 13 year old. If anything is right in this universe, he should be freaking terrified of me. And that's the problem in this country. You need to start randomly attacking kids. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. You see a chav on the right side of the road tonight, pull over, beat the shit out of him. <laughs> the better dressed you are, the better message you're sending. Kids should be hiding from us like they did in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> they shouldn't be walking around like they own the place. My buddy goes, that's not gonna happen. I go, why isn't that gonna happen? He goes, because we passed a law here making it illegal to strike kids under the age of 14. I go, you know what, not a bad law. I agree with the general intent of that. But you know where you went wrong with that law? You told them. <laughs> Don't tell kids it's illegal to hit them. They know it. They wear like a badge on her. You can't hit me yet. So now you got to repeal the law just for 24 hours. Whisper campaign. Don't tell the kids. Thursday too. We can hit them for 24 hours. Catch them off guard. <laughs> Beat the shit out of them. 24 hours. They'll behave for another 11 months before you have to do it again. My buddy goes, no, we're not going to do that. Britain's evolved past striking their kids. Well, I've got a solution for that then too. Give us visas. We'll come over and hit your kids. <laughs> Seriously, we've been practicing on baby seal pups. We know what we're doing. Thanks a lot. You guys are great. My name is Pete Johansson. Good night.